Christ came to save us from our sins, right? Amen. To save us from our sin. So if I were to ask you what was sin, what would you say? Uh, you know, drugs. Okay, that would be a sin, and, yes. And uh, being homosexual. Yes, that's and a sin. And being, um, uh, 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 what women do. Uh, Pornog being Pornog Pornog All of these things are sin. But we're going to read this scripture here, and then we're going to show you from the Bible what sin is. Bring so you up. guys will know. Fair enough? Yeah. All right, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Wait, you know what? Hold that. Got it. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Now this, we're going to show you what sin is according to the Bible. Read. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. The word transgression means to break. Right? Transgress means to break God's laws. That's what we are doing in our community. We're breaking God's laws. What are some of the laws that we're breaking? Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Right and you up. may not have known this, all right? Listen up. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So when you hear that, real quick, what comes to mind when you hear that? When it says a woman shouldn't wear what pertains to man, man shouldn't wear what pertains to women. When you hear that, right, that's that's one of the things that we think about, right? Yeah. And they will put that kind of spirit on you, but there's something it's deeper than that. On the surface, I shouldn't say on the, on, it's deeper. On the surface, we're looking at it from a deep standpoint when we say homosexuality. And that's a spirit. Because if a man puts on a dress, what kind of spirit does that put on him? Like he's a woman. Like he's a woman. A sodomite spirit is on that man that wears a dress. Likewise, when our sisters wear what? Pants. 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 When our sisters wear pants, it puts a spirit on it. So you may not, you may say, you know what? I don't mess with women like that. But guess what? When a man corrects you, you bow up at him. When a woman is in a man's face, that is a that is a masculine spirit. Y'all understand that? So the Bible says that men should that, wear. Can you go over with that again? Absolutely. Read that again. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Bring it up, bring it up. The woman shall not wear that which pertained unto a man. Now, I want you guys to, to, to focus on what was just said. It says, a woman shall not. That's a commandment. Shall not. Read. Wear that which pertained unto a man. Neither shall a man. Put on a woman's garment. Can you guys imagine if we had on high heels a wig and a dress teaching the Bible? Would you take us serious? No. 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 And if you did take us serious, something's wrong with you. Amen. Do you understand that? Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So Rock 32, 24. So it says that's an abomination unto God for men to dress out of order and women to dress out of order. Right, right. Watch this. Sirach 32 and verse 24. Read. Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 32 verse 24. Bring it up. He that believeth in the Lord take it heed to the commandments and he that trusted in him shall fare never the worse. You see that? So if we love God, we would obey what he said. Amen. So guess what? What do you got to do? Change. Meaning what? what do we just deal with? Pants, right? Yeah. So that means you, you got to take those pants off. Because well, guess, guess, guess what happens, sister? We're in a situation like this, right? I see you're doing your little twitch and you're, you're turning around. But what happens is, if you love your people and if you love your brother, what happens, my sisters, is when brothers see you out in the street and they see your tight pants, they ain't really trying to deal with you and get to know you for what you have here. You understand that? that that's right. Amen. And that's the problem with our community. But guess what the job of that man is? Exodus 22, 16, right? Because you guys play a role in this. You have to dress according to what the Bible says, right? You got to get built up in the scriptures. And guess what? You come over here and teach your people. Do you love your people? You see the condition that we're in, right? Do you feel helpless sometimes? The only way we're going to be able to do that is if we gather together as a nation. Watch this. Read. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a maid. It's going back because I saw you, you know, doing your little thing. I, I want to show you that the Lord is not happy with that. And I'm not trying to call you out. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to show you what is required of you as an Israelite. 
We are just not normal people walking around on this earth. We're That's God's right. chosen people. Right. We've right. never been taught that. Right. We've been taught that those white folks over in Israel, that those are God's chosen right. people. We've been taught that the so-called white man is God's chosen people. Right. No. Right. No, we are. Right. Understand that. But because of the reason we're in the condition that we're in, the reason why we're not on top and on the bottom is because we broke God's commandments. Yes, yes. And one of the commandments is what I'm helping you with right now, my sister. Bring it out. Read that. And if a man entice a maid. So a man come to you and say, damn, sister, you fine. I like the way you look. You smell good. You look good. All oh, whispering sweet nothings to you. Watch this. Read. That is not the truth. And lie with her. So if that woman is not engaged to another man, but then he speaks game to you, and then he lays with you, meaning he has sex with you. Read. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. That's a law. That man that you sleep with, he's supposed to marry you. Amen. Right. That's what the scripture says. Uh, give me Surat 6. Is that what I want to prove, friend? Surat 6 and 7. All right. These are steps that we need to take. When it, and this, uh, what I'm reading applies to you too. All right. These are things that we have to do before we get to that point. Because what happens is we put the cock before the horse. We see a brother that got nice hair, we see a sister with nice skin. That's what we base our relationship on, is how a person looks. And we have not taken the time out to prove that person. Read. So I go Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. Read. And be not hasty to credit him. Guess what? Let's just say you meet a sister, right? And she said, you know what, brother, I don't want you to take, I don't want you to uh, pay for this meal. I want to pay for the meal. Your mind is blown. Damn, I met a sister that bought my, 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 my food for me. Damn, my, this sister take me shopping. And based on that, you're caught in a trick bag. You understand that you have not taken the time out to know that sister. Likewise with you, you have not taken the time out to know anybody. And we're laying with people that we don't know. And for you sisters especially, you guys take on spirits that you know not of. Right. You understand that? You're already battling in your flesh as it is, and now you're taking on more spirits. Right. Read. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first, uh -huh. and be not hasty to credit him. Be not hasty to call him a friend or call her a friend. Read. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. For his what? For his own occasion. That occasion is talking about for his benefit. I want to get mine. And I'm kicking you to the curb. No. That's how it works. That's how it works in our community. That Jeremiah 10. Give me Jeremiah 10. All right. Yeah. We're going to start at verse 1. Because what has happened is, this is what we have done in the midst of being in captivity. Y'all understand it? You do know we're still in slavery. We're still in captivity. All right, read that. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Hear the word which the Lord speaking unto you, O house of Israel. So what you guys are going to, as you listen to this Bible, you're going to hear the word Israel mentioned over and over and over because God is only dealing with you. Read. Thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, mm -hmm. and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. So the Bible tells us not to learn what the heathens have taught us. The heathen taught us women wear pants. The heathens have taught us to celebrate Christmas, New Year's, birthdays, and all these other wicked holidays. That's what the heathen has taught us. The heathen has taught us it's okay for us to lay down with a white woman. Can I sit down? Sure, you, you can. Absolutely. You can. This is what the heathen has taught us to do. You understand that? You understand, sister? So the Bible says we got to come out of the ways of the heathen. That's what we have to do. That doesn't mean you flee to another country. That means, give me 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Oh no, uh, Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. Watch this. Romans chapter 12. Is that what I want? Or is it 1 Corinthians 12 and 2? Yeah, read. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. You see that? The Bible says, do not conform yourselves to this world. Read. But be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? In the will of God, right? You want to be in his will. All praises. You know what I want. Psalms 40. We want to be in the will of God. How do we get in the will of God? What do you think? There you go. What you say, says. Now, there's a word that I'm looking for that I want you guys to, uh, you need to engrave this in your mind. 
That sounds good, right? And it is true. But there are specific words that we must use so we can solidify the thought, right? Watch this. Psalm chapter 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. You see that the Bible says that the law is within your heart. The heart here is making reference to your mind, not this muscle that pumps blood. You understand that? It's talking about your mind. You have to keep the laws and the commandments of God in your mind. That is the will of God. Yes, what is my purpose? Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? Give me Ecclesiastes. This is the whole duty of man, it right? It's a, it is not to make money. It is not to, to lay down with multiple women and multiple men. That is not the will of God. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Guess what? After you've lived your life, after you've lived, my sister, after you've lived your life, after you've lived your life, at some point as we get older, we take a step back and say, why in the hell am I here? What is my purpose? The Bible is going to tell you what your purpose is. Read. Fear God. Do what? Fear God. Read. And keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. You see that? You're not being taught this good stuff in the church. The church is not teaching you this. The church is telling you every manner of evil that there is, and they're not teaching our people the right thing. Give me Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. Malachi 2 and 7. It all goes back to God's laws, statutes, and commandments. As you see in our community, we are a lawless people. Right. We're lawless. We right. don't know the yeah. laws of God. We don't know what I'm supposed to do as a man. What makes me a man? What makes me a man? Read. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Right. For the priest slips. The priest just so you guys know, it's talking about the pastors, the so-called pastors. Read. Should keep knowledge. Now, it says we should keep knowledge, right? We want to get some understanding, knowledge, knowledge. We have a little bit, of, we got a lot of information here, but we don't have the true knowledge. We've got information, but not the true knowledge. Let's see what the true knowledge is. Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. You see what we keep going back to? The laws of God. How do we get the laws of God in our spirit? Psalms 19 and 7. How do we make that change? How do we renew our minds? Remember we talked about renewing earlier? How do I renew my mind? How do I make a change? How do I make a difference in my community? You understand that? This is how we do that. Read. Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. Y'all see that? It's going back to the laws, statutes, and commandments. Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.